Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Live. Today I will be showing you the breakdown of this little project that I've been doing with uh, with Blender and iPhone LiDAR. So LiDAR is a light and ranging uh, scanner tools that's provided with the latest iPhone and then I think some other smartphone also have it. But anyway, so this is one of the results. So basically this is an object, uh, an object on the chair behind uh, with the wall behind it um, the point cloud is not very high resolutions with the iPhone lighter however it's great for placement of AR objects and also in this case I'm using I'm using it to spray point cloud and then saving the data so I can bring it into blender and then turning it into some kind of painting maybe like a Monet painting or if you replace every single point of the point cloud with a different shapes it's gonna be almost like a like a painting stroke okay it's not that simple but uh, that's basically what it is I'm using stretch of notes here and this is the data that's uh, exported from the iPhone and I export it as XYZ format so we have the placement vector placement um, and also the color we don't have the vector normal yet but I think that's also possible um, in the future uh, the actual data is around 12 megabyte 11 megabytes so this is I'm using CC viewer to quickly look at it uh, that's a, you know this is the point cloud basically a bunch of points sprayed I have another example so this is, uh, this is my working desk very messy but from that data you bring it into Blender and I, you can use uh, something like a uh, or animation nodes or whatever tools you have. I'm basically here with Spreadshock, I'm bringing this text data, load it, and take the position data, scale the position data, and then instance circles. I'm using matrix apply and this methods because it's actually the fastest. If you want triangles uh, with a circle, you can just type in three here. Circle become triangle. So our point cloud is now made up of triangles. But like I said, it can be any shapes. And then so I instance it. And for the color here uh, with this value, you can see this is RGB value. But uh, in Blender, it's, it needs to be between 0 and 1 value. So I divide it with 255 bring all the RGB in into this color in node and assign it into polygon face of every triangle so it's really quite simple and the shader I'm using right now is just basically shader plug into the emissions I believe the point cloud here is actually shaded as well um, if I'm not wrong, yeah, but anyway, this is a, a complete object and it's a mess with vertex data that you can bake into a texture and then export it out as something else. Or this is something that can be um, processed further. You can use this as reference, that's actually what uh, the iPhone LiDAR is really good at. Um, it's not very high res, like I mentioned again. Um, but you can get the accurate measurement of the floor, the wall, the chair, and the, the objects pretty much like that. This is actually a pumpkin. All right. So that's a, that's a little project that I've been doing. Um, and for this, this point cloud, this is around 200,000 points. I think up to 1 million points, it should be OK. You can actually go really really high number but the process will take a bit more time and you can also um, have a, an animated point cloud with the iPhone it's a and the data is actually really huge you can get get to one gigabyte very very quickly maybe like 15 seconds of animated performance um, is like around one gigabyte or more and Blender can actually visualize it 
uh, using an add-on that I'm using it's a point cloud visualizer maybe I can show you a quick one <clears throat> this is point cloud visualizer and maybe I have it on my download under my download uh, scan, scan. I could use the pumpkin uh, sunflower a hey, okay I have this sunflower so this is the add-on that's available for free but you can also buy the pro version so when I hit draw it start to draw this point cloud so this is point cloud of this sunflower that I took earlier you can see the resolution is not too high you cannot really see the stem of this sunflower but you can kind of see the environment the table the pot it doesn't have vertex normal with the data that's been captured you can have the vertex normal using different app or oh, the app that I'm using actually uh, polycam AI and also every point AI and what's the other one sidescape yeah, all this app can capture point cloud and some of them can generate mesh on the fly so this is the add-on that's simply visualize the point cloud for you and you can render this out of course editing erasing and trimming point cloud that will be like a different type of uh, assignment it's a uh, but what I really like of course is to be able to visualize uh, visualize it in blender and then using the data if we can extract the data you know from PLY turning it into XYZ data like this very simple uh, to work with and then using something like spare the um, you can also use app like a uh, mesh lab to convert the data sometimes that's really useful okay so that's basically my update on point cloud and data processing using uh, using an add-on like uh, in this case this spare chop add-on and also uh, point cloud visualizer in blender it's all uh, definitely you're gonna use this in the future uh, version of Blender 2.93 you can actually have an actual point cloud object in Blender so point cloud objects can handle big point cloud data very efficiently in Blender and you can pro perhaps use it with a geometry instancing you know so you it's become like a particles that you can instance and then yeah it's gonna be easier in Blender 2.93 and up I believe so keep eyes on that update and for now I will be using this XYZ data and spreadsheet like this and I'm going to share the setup with you. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.